Good afternoon, Tennessee Tech. My name is Javier Huaracha, and today we'll be interviewing Mr. Jacob Strickler, our new computer science lecturer. Hello, Mr. Jacob Strickler. How are you today? I'm doing fairly well. I tend to enjoy my Fridays. What made you choose computer science? So there were two thoughts that I had in going into computer science. One was, like I imagine a lot of students, I wanted to make video games. I'd played video games for a lot of my childhood, and I thought, oh, it would be great if I could make my own. My second goal was world domination. Um, because I thought, okay, you know, I can get a degree in computer science, maybe get a minor in economics, and then use my bachelor's to get into law school. I'll have technology, money, and law, but, but thankfully cybersecurity helps me fill that computer science niche. What OS do you prefer and why? So if I'm just going about my daily life, it's going to be Windows. Windows is everywhere. It's the easiest to use. It's what everything is made for. Linux has a lot of utility in CS, but if I'm just a regular person doing regular things. What is a common myth or misconception about your job as a computer science lecturer? I'm not sure computer science lecturers are the sorts of people that get myths made about them. Mm -hmm. um, I would say one misconception that a lot of students probably have is the idea that just because you're an instructor, suddenly you gain access to some mystical knowledge that other people don't have. We're just people. We went through the same thing that you did. We're still learning things every day. And so, you know, if you have a question about some esoteric uh, aspect of a subject that you want to ask us and you're really enthusiastic about it, it's entirely possible that we have absolutely no idea what the answer is, and we're just as interested in it as you are. If there was one question every student had to answer, what would you ask? I want to know what motivates them. Every single student that I see in my classroom, they have a story of their entire life up until that point that brought them to be in my classroom. So I just want to know, like, why are you here? What do you want out of your life? What do you find interesting? You know, what makes you get out of bed in the morning? So it would help me as an instructor to figure out what is relevant to you and what is actually going to help you achieve your goals. If you asked a student what motivated them and they just answered with money, what would you say to them? There's, there's a common discourse that says, you know, money doesn't buy happiness. Um, but the thing is, money buys shelter, it buys clothes, it buys food, it buys health insurance. Money buys a lot of things, and those things can lead to happiness. If your primary motivator is money, I'm not going to judge you for it, but you need to understand that a lot of the things that are going to provide you with a lot of money are also going to take up a lot of your time and attention. And if you spend the majority of your life doing something you don't want to do, you're probably not going to be, have a very happy life. By all means, go out and pursue as much money as you want, but don't sacrifice the things that make you enjoy life in order to do that. What's one lesson your time at Tennessee Tech has taught you that you think everyone should learn at some point in their life? Try to take the value from every experience that you find yourself in. Most people who go to universities are going straight from high school and they're still in the process of figuring out what it means to be an adult. Uh, you might fail your first class. You might have to wake yourself up and hold yourself accountable to your own schedule for the first time. You might have your first romance. You know, you, we have all kinds of speakers and student organizations and all of those sorts of things. Just do things, and no matter what happens, it was a horrible experience, you hated it, you never want to do it again, or you loved it, extract value from it. Learn more about yourself, learn more about what you want to do, make friends, make contacts. If you can learn to do that, then nothing you do will ever be a waste. What is your biggest motivator for teaching? I just really like being a mentor for people. I love learning about people. I want to know like, what do you want out of life? What are your goals? How can I help you with that? You know, I love to be able to answer questions, provide guidance, advice. For those students that really do care and when you can make a difference and you can show them like the paths that they can take and, and guide them toward pursuing their interests, they usually don't forget that. In terms of learning a programming language, would you rather students read a book or watch a video online? So the reality is that if you want to learn the language, watching a whole bunch of videos online is probably going to be the quickest way to do that. I mean, when you are a programmer or an IT person or whatever you are, like 80% of the job is just Googling things. But I do want to shout out the value of books. There is a focus that you get when you're just sitting down and, and reading a book that you don't get from watching a video. When you're watching a video, you have a million other things you could be doing. You're, you're probably in a browser. You can be checking your email. You can be scrolling through YouTube or TikTok or something. You can just zone out and not listen to what's happening. But when you're sitting there reading a book, you have to be focused on the book or else you can't read it in the first place. So. 
if you're going to learn a new skill, programming languages being among them, I think you should probably read at least one book about it. How essential would you say math is in terms of general computer science? Everyone in computer science has to know binary, right? Understand how binary notation works, be able to do like binary operations and whatnot. So that's universal, you gotta know that. But if we're talking about like calculus, well, if you're dealing with algorithms, yeah, you might need some calculus. If you're doing machine learning, uh, you'll probably need some linear algebra, some statistics, that kind of thing. Crypto, uh, cryptography, that's a lot of math. Obviously, if you're going through the university, you're going to have to have math classes, so you have to have it to get your degree, but in the actual position, it just depends. What computer science concentration are you interested in, if any? I have to say cybersecurity, because cybersecurity was my concentration, and I've done a lot of extracurricular stuff in cybersecurity, so if I didn't say that, I feel like I would be failing a lot of people. But I also think that data mining and AI and machine learning and all that is terribly interesting. I think that it's very fascinating and it's very terrifying. Um, I don't think that I want to do it, but I am very happy to just be interested in it from a distance. If you could go back, what is something you would tell your college freshman self? GME to the moon. I don't know if either of you know what that means, but somebody out there does. Wash your hair, it looks terrible. Relax. Everything's going to be okay. You're going to make it. I had a lot of anxiety starting around my second sophomore semester because I sort of coasted through high school. It was very easy for me. And I coasted through my freshman semester. And I don't mean that I was lazy necessarily. I did a whole lot of stuff. But it was all pretty easy for me. And then around second sophomore semester, it just became too much. I had like 17 hours that semester and I was also going around to conferences and, and doing like summer camps and all that and I was having heart palpitations. I was like, I can't do this anymore. And so my perspective on things just kind of changed. I was like, you know, I gotta take care of myself first, make sure that I'm physically and mentally healthy and everything else is gonna come second. So, but I made it through, I'm here now and uh, I'm very thankful for that. And yeah, my hair was terrible. It was disgusting. I, someone should have told me that. How do you prefer that students act in the classroom? Number one, do not just sit there and stare at me blankly. Yeah, yeah, the, the person you can't see because he's behind the camera, he needs to take notes. Do not just sit there and stare at me blankly. Ask questions. At the very least, answer questions when I ask them of you, right? Like, if the students aren't engaged, if they're not interested in the subject, if they're not asking questions and, and responding to you and engaging in a dialogue, then it's just you talking basically to an empty room. I don't really want to lecture for an hour and 15 minutes, unless they're interested, unless they care about what we're talking about and about what I have to say and, and I'm able to help them. And if they're talking to me, then we can do that. But if I just go in and I'm like, okay, let's talk about some stuff. We good? Everybody got it? Okay, let's talk about some more stuff. That's just a bad experience. What was your favorite subject in school? Broadly, I would say history. I like learning about religion. I like learning about different cultures and wars and law and government and all that sort of thing. It's the story of humanity. Like a lot of people, and I've even had conversations with people about this, they'll be like, why does history matter? It's just a bunch of stuff that's already happened. It's like, because it informs the entirety of your experience as a human being. It, I don't think it matters what you do. If you want to be a chemist, if you want to be a biologist, a computer scientist, an engineer, you know, a construction worker, if you just want to like be a server at a restaurant, you need to have a good understanding of history and culture and geography because, again, it defines the human experience. Well, that's the end of our interview for today. Thank you so much for being here, Mr. James. Thank you. Thank you.